we believe really passionately that a client voice should drive decision making and human service. But we also believe passionately that uh, research and promising practice should also be an important part of the conversation. It's also very personal in nature for me. I grew up in the foster care system and I was, have, you know, over 21 years of being in the foster care system was never once asked what I thought works, what I thought went well, what I thought didn't work well, what ideas I might have, and that always struck me even at a, as a young age as um, a real waste of, <laughs> of resources. When I was introduced the idea of Lumio, the, I sort of understood that, oh, this could provide a way for people to brainstorm and communicate online. People really appreciate the opportunity to be able to plug into a discussion um, on their own terms and on their own time versus having to be in person at a meeting, you know, the offering the opportunity for people to engage in a way that they're most comfortable with. And I've definitely, definitely had a lot of experience with people who don't speak up in the room who are very vocal on Lumia. Um, so we use Lumia with a domestic violence agency this summer. We told them right up front in the beginning that we were going to do individual interviews. We do one-on-one -on -one interviews with frontline staff, board members, key stakeholders in the community, confidentially, and then we report all that information back. We do promising practice research, um, and then we would follow that with the first retreat where we would present a lot of this information back but that we would have the next session would actually be an online Lumio session between the first and the second retreat. And we told them that right up front and that we told them the reasons for that because it gives us more time, that time factor. Because there's only so many meetings you can get board members and staff to all come to you know, four hour retreats or three hour retreats. So it was gonna enable us to have richer discussions about what came up and that it, we felt that it would also help people who might not speak up in the room, um, have the opportunity to really process. You know, we were also able to attach the documents, so if someone wasn't at the first retreat, and there was one person I think that could not make the first retreat, so all our presentations, data, everything, all the notes from the first retreat were attached, um, so that could all be reviewed and then they could participate in the discussion. We incorporated all that Lumio discussion into our notes from the first retreat and it really helped us hit the ground running in the next retreat primary you know tip is just to think about how you could integrate it into your existing process start small um, you know like I said I started with kind of a, a, a way of approaching strategic planning that I already had and I thought how could I maybe add this you know a little piece that might make it a little richer I had to prep everyone that was going to be participating I had to explain you know why we were doing this why we were using Lumio how it would be part of the process so if you didn't participate you were going to lose out on an opportunity to have your voice heard in a certain way that preparation is key and, and the follow-through, you know, in making sure people see, oh, what we talked about on Lumio, you know, came into this next in-person discussion. Good, deep strategic planning takes time, and especially if you want it to be inclusive. The Lumio edition allows for, I think, much richer and deeper engagement. Things that seem really intractable, I, I truly do believe that if you bring all those stakeholders together and you give them meaningful leadership roles in decision-making, that we'll be able to impact those issues.